What is up guys, Lukewarm Mining here. It's been a minute since I posted anything, but this was something I finally had some content on, so I wanted to record it and talk with you guys about it. So as you can see, I have two Z15s running right here. I have another one on the bench over there. Look at all my coffee and all my other fun stuff. Anyways, so I just got sent over the files um, for free. I'll have a link to it down below, but I have finally gotten software to overclock the Z15s. Now I am working with the dev also on fixing the Z15 firmware. It looks like he's also going to be getting a Z15 so that he can fine tune it and get it to work perfectly on all versions. But essentially, there is now firmware that lets you overclock Z15. So anyways, I'm going to go over that, show you guys how to install it onto your Z15. Or actually they have it for the Z15 Pro as well. And then up up your clocks. If you have a lower end version like a K or a J, you can do the same thing with the firmware. So let's get right to it. So once you have your SD card plugged into your computer, you can head over to chiplessbonds.com slash getting started. That is the creator of this firmware and go ahead and download the firmware. As you can see, he has all kinds of other firmware here. I know for a fact he's also picking up another Z15 for himself because he sold his last one a long time ago. So he's going to do a more up-to-date version that will be updated on the website. I'm currently working with him right now to get a dev fee version working. So you don't need to reach out to him directly to buy it. But as of right now, there is not a dev fee version that works correctly on the Z15. So he has given me a version that does not have the dev fee. And instead, he's just going to charge a one-time fee for it. Uh, that will change in the future from what it sounds like. Uh, he also has firmware available for the Z15. So what you can go ahead and do, if you want to try it out, maybe I was just having issues with it. You can download the Z15 SD card flash right here. We'll do that right now. Download it real quick. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is go over to the uh, firmware package. See right here, I have mine downloaded from Telegram because I got it from him directly. And what I will go ahead and do is you would extract this and send it to your SD card. So there's only a couple tools that you will need and hardware that you will need in order to put the firmware on the C15 or honestly any ant miner device. So what you'll need is an eight or 16 gigabyte SD card. Reason being is that the miner will not work and will not read anything larger than 16 gigs. I find that the eight gig reads super fast, flashes almost instantly on most ant miner versions. So might as well just grab one of these. Unfortunately, these cost just as much as 32 and 64 gig uh, SD cards, they don't really make a ton of these anymore. So grab a couple of them, put all kinds of different firmware on them, and just keep them around. The other thing you'll need is an adapter. If you don't have a laptop that can take a micro SD card, grab an adapter. This one's a type C. My laptop for some reason does not have an SD card reader. So I had to go and pick one up, but all you do is plug this in and flash the firmware. Next thing you're gonna do is take that SD card with your firmware on it, go ahead and slide it into the front right there. Make sure it's the SD formatted one, not the web UI one. Slide it in there. Go ahead and turn on your miner. So I have mine on the parallel miner breakout board right here. This is just a board that I'm testing, but just showing how to flash the firmware on it. And then what you'll see happen is these lights will turn off on this one. For some reason it's ramping up right now. Not exactly sure why. You see the lights turn off. After about 30 seconds a minute, the lights will start flashing. Then honestly, I let it go for another 15 seconds after the lights have stopped flashing. 30 seconds maybe after the lights stop flashing. Remove the SD card, turn off the miner, turn it back on, and the firmware will be installed. As you can see, actually went a lot faster than normal. See how it's flashing? Give it another 15 seconds, 30 seconds. Turn off, remove the card, turn off the miner, good to go. Alrighty, so now the firmware is installed, and as you can see, it says chipless 3.0 here. Um, depending on which one you download, this one's the dev fee-less one that I got sent as a test firmware. Uh, the one that I showed you guys is the dev fee version. Uh, that one, I was having some issues with it, so your mileage may vary on that one. If you're also having issues on that one, reach out to him on Telegram. He's also just going to do one where there's a flat fee that you pay up front for it, and he will send you just the fee-less uh, version. At least that's last time that I spoke to him what he was planning on doing so now if we go over to minor configuration as you can see boom we got frequency we got voltage so I've been playing with this already um, mine was actually set to 800 uh, megahertz from the factory in 840 millivolts on this 
I've actually successfully earlier gotten this thing up to uh, the full 820 um, and then I think it was at like 900 millivolts so I've been working my way down uh, and I was getting over 468 the highest that I saw was 480 K souls so if we look at it right now this thing's making 1871 or 1817 a day right now as we're at this oops, we're already going up again maybe we'll hit 19 bucks while I'm talking uh, we're you know about 18 and a half bucks a day right now after electricity costs at seven cents uh if we're up at four I would make it easy and say 460 k soul just a little bit over 10 percent or a little bit below 10 percent i mean dude that means you're making an extra two bucks a day on income which means over here making over 20 dollars a day per machine just from changing the firmware and changing the clock now i will say ahead of time there seems to be some z15s that cannot overclock as high as others and not in the sense of bidding it seems the newer generation z15 so the gen 2 boards um, have difficulty getting past 820 830 megahertz whereas the gen 1 uh, boards which you'll see will have a heat sink on the front mosfets have no issues going over 820 there seems to be some kind of limitation set from the factory on them uh, chipless is going to be getting a z15 in so that he can actually physically have one in place and test all the things and make sure all the firmware is working a hundred percent as he wants and may be able to bypass this auto tune target of 820 830 on the gen 2 boards and get it somewhere to where the gen 1 boards are at where it's the 900 um, because then you could get this thing over 500 i've seen over 500 k soul on these with the firmware so anyways oh you can see this board's going crazy right now 880 um even even with the clock not working properly i think it's just not displaying properly we're still getting 440 um k soul so that's already still a five percent increase alone off of it i think this just comes from the stability of setting the clocks and not having a weird clock issue with the pick so if you have any questions feel free to hit me up down below hit me up on discord or over in the chipless uh, telegram chat uh, let me know what you guys get for clock frequencies let me know if you can send your things to uh I want to see someone do over 500, 550 out of these things. Maybe some exotic cooling or big ducted fans on it. It'd be super cool. I'm really into that. I like sending devices to their clear, you know, doom. But uh, got to do it for the numbers, right? Anyways, y'all take care. Peace.